from the other tie, it's hard to say. Bayern turned up on, you know, Arsenal didn't turn up, I think. Um, David Raya had a, a, another suspect game in the Champions League between the sticks. I think defensively, Arsenal were a little bit more ropey than we have seen in the Premier League. Hello and welcome to the Football Digest podcast. I'm your host, Connor Bromley, and I'm joined today by my good colleague, Ned Keating. And there's only one place to start today. We're going to talk about the Champions League to begin with. And last night, we saw two brilliant games, along with the two games we saw on Tuesday night as well. But last night, we saw PSG lose 3-2 at home against Barcelona. And Atletico Madrid win 2-1 against Borussia Dortmund, which could set up a pretty tasty semi-final between two Spanish clubs. Yeah, it looks, uh, looks well-placed for a La Liga semi-final, guaranteeing at least one Spanish club in the final at Wembley on, on June 1st. I think definitely more so for Barcelona to get the win. I know away goals don't count anymore, but still to, to get a win away from home, to have that advantage, that one goal advantage to take uh, home with you, uh, a perfect night for Barcelona, I think, almost. You know, any any sort of victory would have, would have done it uh, for them. Um, but another cracking game, one that kind of really seesawed a, a roller coaster match as well. Obviously, Barcelona taking the lead, then PSG hitting back to take the lead themselves 2 1, and then Barcelona scoring two of their own goals uh, to, to then obviously, um, yeah, to, to come away from Paris with the win. It'll be disappointing for Luis Enrique, obviously coming up against his former club in Barcelona, won the Champions League for Barcelona, of course, in 2015. Would have been hoping to do the same. Uh, it, with PSG this year, Kylian Mbappe looking to sign off from PSG uh, with a with a Champions League trophy in his in his collection. And again, you know, it, it, all hints are uh, that he is going to join Real Madrid in the summer. So of course, Barcelona will be uh, their their big rivals, his big rivals potentially from next season. So he would have been looking to get one over on the early doors. Didn't uh, still got a chance to perform well at New Camp next week, of course. But it looks like advantage Barcelona because they have that. Uh, one goal advantage to take them from back home. So they'll be you know, fairly confident their chances of reaching the final four. For Atletico, uh, you know, a little bit different. Uh, again, you know, you want to win at home in your first legs. If you are at home in that first leg, you want that victory to set you up, to give you an advantage to take away from home. And it will be difficult for Atletico next week. You know, of course, going away to Borussia Dortmund, the yellow wall, everything that kind of comes from the Signal Iduna Park and playing in that atmosphere. Um, you know, it'll be a tough place for Atletico, but they are... Uh, you know, definitely their character can't be questioned. They are one of the hardest working, hardest I wouldn't, fighting in the sense that they will give everything, not fighting in the sense that some people might think about a, a Diego Simeone side. Although I don't know, we might see that at times. You know, I remember that game against Manchester City a few years back when uh, when, when they kicked seven bells out of City. Um, and, and to be fair, City gave as good as they got, I think, in that game. Um, but I think that one's probably, you know, Atletico will be happy to take an advantage with them. Borussia Dortmund haven't been vintage this year in, in the Bundesliga. They haven't been, you know, the kind of Dortmund side of old uh, that we've been seeing. And they're kind of, they, they seem a bit shorn of their star players. No Bellingham this year, no Haaland as well. Jonathan Sancho has gone back there, but he is trying to find his way again after a difficult spell at Man United. He's doing okay there. I don't think, you know, he's, he's, he's doing well. He, he could be doing better. But, you know, again, he's, he's just happy just to be playing football regularly, I think. And and a manager who likes him in Edin Terzic. But work to do still, I think, for Atletico, despite the fact that they have that advantage because of everything that kind of comes with playing at the Signal in Duna Park. But I do think we are looking very likely because of the fact, you know, it sounds so simplistic to say that both Spanish sides won their first legs on Wednesday night that we are looking at an all-Spanish semi-final and that side of the draw. Uh, but it does look like it's going to be a, a, a heavy chance that that is the case. You look at the results on Tuesday night as well. You know, we saw two brilliant games. Arsenal drawn 2-2 against Bayern. Real Madrid drawn 3-3 against Man City, which sort of poses the question of the, the abolition of away goals. Is that having a massive impact now in these Champions League games? Because I remember sort of five, ten years ago, these first legs were often cagey, the home team doesn't want to give an away goal away. They're desperate not to concede. Yet it has almost the adverse effect that when the rule was brought in, you were hoping that away teams would attack more to get the away goal. In reality, home teams shut up shop a little bit more and you ended up with two teams who both didn't want to concede a goal. Whereas now we're seeing all four of these games have just been epic you know, in terms of the fact of the goals that are being scored, the quality on the pitch, both teams going for it in all games. Do you think the change from away goals has had a massive impact on European football? 
I think so definitely more from as you said there from the view of the home team and especially the home team in the first legs because you know <laughs> I'm not comparing top level football to football manager uh, the, the video game here but I, I can remember you know kind of uh, you know playing games on that in the past and when you know away goals were in the rules in the game as well you're kind of thinking that first leg of a of a European tie where away goals did count that you not necessarily you know try to shut up shop but the key wasn't it wasn't must win it was you know must not concede I think you know don't give them an advantage have that advantage yourself when you go into that second leg and that's maybe how the teams did approach it as you said there you know especially the home teams that you know winning wasn't vital but not conceding was you know they they could they could draw the game nil nil and they'd still be fighting because. They've not given anything away to the opposition. One goal away from home, they'd have to score twice. Then you know, it kind of it kind of gave that, um, you know, it gave way to that game plan, as you said. You know, now you're kind of seeing, uh, you know, kind of gung ho approach from teams at home. You know, maybe a bit more. They're not, you know, winning is vital now because they have that. That's the advantage that they have then, that they are at home first, that they have an opportunity in front of their own fans to use that advantage to their advantage and get an advantage in the tie. Lots of advantages there. Um, and that kind of creates a more open game. They're more likely to kind of come forward, attack. You know, the away side is always going to, you know, maybe maybe the away side now is a little bit more reluctant to attack because of it, because the away goes that matter. And again, they want to kind of keep it tight so that they've got something to, not so much defend, but still have something to play for, at least when they have that second leg at home. Do you feel a little bit sorry for Manchester City that they've basically got nothing from scoring three goals away at the Bernabeu? Yeah, you kind of, you know, you kind of do feel a bit of sympathy for them there. Um, but equally, you know, should they have been a bit more better defensively? I think like the quality of the goals in that game were, were quite high class, weren't they? So I don't, I don't know if we can pin the blame too much on the defence there. But it does feel a little bit harsh on them that they kind of come away, um, you know, nothing really, frankly, isn't it? You know, it's it's ninety minutes, a ninety minute one leg shootout that we've got now at the Etihad next week. Um, you know, Arsenal Bayern Munich, the, the kind of flip side of it is, of course, the penalty decisions that come from it. And Bayern Munich, you know, angry that they didn't get uh, a penalty for Gabriel handling the ball in the box like a little schoolboy. Um, even the referee, had, had, you know, kind of referred to it as a, a schoolboy error, didn't he? Uh, in every sense of the word. Um, but, you know, it doesn't, because the away goals don't count now, and because it's level at 2 2, it doesn't feel like that that should have. You know, we should be talking about that pass next week. You know, if Bayern go out, they fluff their lines at home, away goals didn't come into it. It wasn't because they missed out on that penalty or whatever. You know, they, they're they at home now. They have the chance to kind of go on and uh, and win the tie in front of their own fans. And I think away goals means then that, you know, kind of that little silly error, we shouldn't be talking about it past <laughs> probably even today, really. And we should kind of move on with our lives and everything else. You kind of, yeah, you do feel a little bit sorry for the away teams when they do come out and attack. You know, and even Barcelona as well, you know, Wednesday night to score three goals. You know, they have the advantage of winning, but they don't necessarily have the advantage of, of you know, the away goals as well. So PSG could win 2-1 in the new camp next week. Is 2-1 a better result than 3-2 at Paris? You know, grand scheme of things, you know, maybe not in terms of like the pure score, but a 2-1 win for PSG next week takes them through to extra time and, and, and potentially penalties as well. So it feels a bit, you know, a little bit harsh in places, but it does, you know, kind of at least make the home side put the onus on them to come out and attack a little bit more as well as perhaps before when they were at home in the first leg maybe they were a little bit more defensive minded shut up shop not give away a goal not give away an advantage to that side and just to sort of finish off this champions league chat um what are your predictions for the quarterfinals i mean i'm guessing from the conversation we had at first that you think barcelona had let madrid to have a pretty strong chance of making it through but you know arsenal buying and, and real madrid man city they're all both sorry evenly poised for me if i'm looking at this you you'd probably say advantage buying and advantage man city but is that how you see it yeah, because they've both got the legs at home, isn't it? Um, and I think home advantage could be key. And I think Manchester City, we saw last year, you know, in the semi-final against Real Madrid, it wasn't 3-3, it was 1-1 at the Bernabeu, wasn't it? But then Manchester City stepped it up a gear and, and kind of tore Real Madrid uh, apart in that second leg at the Etihad. This is a different Real Madrid side, of course. I think that one was in transition. John Cross on Monday's show was still saying that they are a side still in transition. But I think they're definitely a little bit further along the path now. Um, and, and, you know, littered with great players, playing a little bit differently as well. Um, so I think it will be a tougher test this time around for Manchester City. However, I do still see him progressing. Um, 
from the other tie, it's hard to say. Bayern turned up on, you know, Arsenal didn't turn up, I think. Um, David Raya had a, a, another suspect game in the Champions League between the sticks. I think defensively, Arsenal were a little bit more ropey than we have seen in the Premier League. Um, you know, the point there is that surely they can't play as bad as that again next week. You know, Bayern seem to turn up, seem to rock up for this game. You know, the, the, the Bayern unit that we've seen in the Bundesliga this season, uh, and especially since the turn of the year, has been, you know, a, a sorry shadow of their former selves almost, you know, and, um, you know, at the weekend as well, uh, to, to be 2-0 up and then throw it away against Heidenheim like they did, that's not Bayern Munich, so you kind of, you know, thought going into that tie, okay, well, this should be, a, not a walkover, but Arsenal should, you know, progress from it at least. Um, the way that Bayern played in that first leg shows that they are in the game, shows that in European competitions at least, that they are still willing to fight, still willing to give everything. And when you've got the quality of players that they had, and this is a point I made with John on Monday show, when you've got the quality of players that they have throughout the squad, you know, there's talk about Thomas Tuchel having lost the dressing room, and, you know, of course, there are going to be fractions within it because, uh, or sorry, fractures within the squad because of how the season is going. It's it's how it happens at top level football. If you're not winning and you're not, you know, changing the trophies and they're slipping through your fingers, you know, there are going to be cracks in the squad do open up a little bit more in those circumstances, but they still have enough quality individually to go out and win that game and pull together and, and personal pride and everything else that comes with it. So Arsenal have that to come up against because actually on paper, that first eleven for Bayern is still probably top four in Europe, even if they're not doing it on the pitch at the minute. And that's what Arsenal have to be careful of, I think, in that second leg. I think the Bayern Munich squad on paper is better than the Arsenal squad on paper. If football isn't played on paper, we know that. But Bayern showed their quality in that first leg and they're going to be determined to show that quality in the second leg. Tough. Flip of a coin, I think, at this point. Um, but for the sake of a narrative, I'll go with uh, I'll go with Arsenal. We'll have an all English semi final on one side, all Spanish semi final on the other, and we'll know it'd be Premier League versus La Liga in the final at Wembley come June first.